Hi. So I recently released that document that was open sourced guide to board repair that I encourage people to edit, redistribute, duplicate, make better. And one of the things that I couldn't help but notice in the Google document is that a good 30 of the email addresses that we're requesting access to it either edit or view were .edu or .org for public schools. Some of it was Greenwich Public Schools. I saw uh, Owensboro, Kentucky schools. I saw a bunch of people requesting access to this document from within the educational institutions. And I grew up in a simpler time when we did not have a max for every student in school. We had a computer lab with something like 20 Tandys, and that was it, showing my age here. But apparently, and as I'm learning, is that there are a lot of school districts that give max to all the kids. And kids have a tendency to do to max the same thing that people in the East Village do to the max, which is spill water, drop, destroy. So I'm kind of curious here, and I can't help but ask, since they, this happened just about 15 minutes after I uploaded it, are these kids at these schools that are learning how to fix the electronics or learning electronics from my document and from these videos? Is this being used to teach faculty how to, teach, how to fix Macs that belong to the kids that break them, that get liquid damage on them? Just curious, just oh, I want to open up the dialogue and ask the question. And I'm not the type that's going to cold call or cold email because I really hate it when people cold call me. Even if you're offering me a Bitcoin for $20, I'm not going to say thank you. I'm going to say, yeah, but I was in the middle of something and hang up on them. So, but, but I do want to ask, I'm intensely curious here, because we do have some people that actually come here and t ha teach their IT departments how to do this service in-house. So I was very, very surprised to hear that there are school districts that will give out 800 or 1,600 or 10,000 MacBook Airs to students just because of the sheer fragility of them. You know, you flick it, the screen's cracked, a drop of water, the SPI ROM traces to the BIOS are blown or the backlight is blown. And that can be really, really expensive in terms of service cost over time if you're not doing it in-house. So we have quite a few institutions in the local area that are outsourcing their board repairs for those devices to us. But there's also a bunch that have started to contact us because they want us to teach their IT departments how to do these repairs so that they stop outsourcing them. And there was one set of great people that I've had the honor this week of having people from the uh, Arlington Public School District come in. They brought uh, a very large box of machines here, which, Jesus, heavy, which we've had to f uh, go through and fix. And we've been going through quite a few of them. And there's something that I've been noticing that is really, really worrisome, which is that they will as we were going through the pile to try to figure out what was wrong with them, some of them, I, I think I should blame STS Telecom for this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame him. I'm going to blame Jason because he wore that, see, that shirt that said Rehot CPU Bro. And what you're going to see coming up shortly is, is what I think happens when the people that the public school districts were outsourcing this stuff to... Um, uh, when they, when they take that shirt seriously. Now, I, don't, I think that these public schools are doing an amazing, amazing thing. They're taking a great step towards wanting to figure out how to reduce their costs, how to make use of, their, of the resources that they paid for, how to get these machines back in the hands of the students faster. I think it's a great move to do this in-house rather than outsource it to other companies, other franchises, or even places like us. And I think it's great that people are learning how to do this from these videos. And what... I am hoping to do with this video is hopefully get you to avoid some of the pitfalls of outsourcing to places that I'll let them decide if they want to name uh, that are going to do things like this to the board. So what, what is all this stuff here in this box? Well, it's all parts and uh, things that we brought from uh, Arlington County. So these are all the machines that you've been, uh, that's, that students are using at the public school district you're in? Yes. All right. And you've, you, where have you, and you've been sending these off before? Yeah, and what are you here for today? What are you here for for these three days? Uh, for training. So uh, that you can... Do logic board training. How many do you think have been made working so far? Oh, I'd say we're at like a 75% rate right now. Right, so this is, this is what's been happening before and something that you may want to watch for if your public school district is sending off these things for repair. So what is this on camera here, this burning stuff right by the CPU? Oh. What is... So this over here... See where this is sticking up? Yep. And you can kind of like push it down. That's popcorning. Uh, uh, air because bubbles. Because <laughs> this was heat gunned. Uh, somebody heat gunned the CPU to try to fix it when a PM Sleep S4L was missing. So now when that signal was missing, what did we actually do to fix it properly? What, what's this thing for? 
What was that thing for? That's the controller for the BIOS. That's the BIOS controller. Yep. So some of these machines that were heat gunned the entire time only needed wires run around the SPI ROM that we've done here on this channel for about two or three years. And this one is essentially completely destroyed. But not just that one. Where do we have the Roasted. rest of it? Roasted. And it's not the only one. <laughs> hmm. Oh, it gets better. So this one, this is another one. Wait till you see this. It, it, this just gets more and more hilarious. So once this one was brought in, missing the CPU. <laughs> they forgot to put the CPU back. The CPU is gone. Be careful who you get your stuff repaired Holy by. Holy crap. Well, let's see, how many more do we have that were heat gunned? Oh, man. Here we go. Hmm. We fixed every single one that basically didn't get fried. Ah, here we go. There she blows. So this is another one. I think it's going to have the same popcorns in the same area. Oh, man. It gets better and better. Holy man. This, so th this is another one. You can see the same general signs of popcorning, like this over here, if I tap on it. Yep. It moves up and down. Because this, this is more, uh, I guess, more delamination than popcorning. But yes, yeah, so, so just one thing to be careful of, if you do have thousands of this in your school district, when you get them back and they're unfixable, take a look at them and see if this stuff looks like this. Yep. Because if it does look like this, it most likely means you're sending them off to somebody who's taking a blow dryer and doing this and then billing you two to three hundred dollars if it works again rather than actually doing the diagnostic work to figure out why it's not working. Because that can cost you a lot of money. Yes, it definitely can. How do you feel about figuring this stuff? So what does it mean if it's taking 0 0.02 amps in a power supply? It's not, the power rail's messing somewhere. What does it, now, how does, what does it mean if it's taking 0.5 amps in the power supply? Starting up. What does it mean if it's taking somewhere... What does it mean if it's taking something like 0.09 amps in the power supply? That means there's a short some. Ah, uh, no, short would be high. Uh, 0 0.9? 0 0.09 amps. 0 0.09? That means it's getting nothing, really. No, you were close. You had it right the first time. So they're short to ground? There's a short to ground on a rail. Okay, on a rail. All right. Yeah. Yep. How many more of these do you have back home? Thousands. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. And All it's right. a, a continual thing, so it's like every single day you get more and more, and, and you know, they're sending them out and they're killing us, so we're yeah. coming up here to learn from a pro. All right, well, yep. it's been good having you. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. What was particularly frustrating about this to me is that I've gone over this very, very common fault in many of my videos, and uh, I'll, I'll link to one of the ones below where I go over this very, very common problem. So one of the very, very common problems is as you're going through the list of power rails on this page, you'll get to PP5VS4RS3 on an air, and it will be missing. That's created by this chip, U7501. U7501 is going to be enabled and turn on if it's getting its enable signal. This enable signal is going to come for a P5VS4RS3 EN, and if we follow that back, we'll see that that comes from... PM sleep S4L. And if we look for PM sleep S4L, we're going to see that that comes from U0500. U0500. U0500 is over here the CPU. So when this signal is missing, what a lot of people who are inexperienced will think is that the CPU has a problem. And when they look online and they do their searches and they see that people are using heat guns on graphics chips to fix them, they think, well, CPU, it looks like a graphics chip. Let me heat that. When in reality, the problem is very often something entirely different, which is that, and this happens on many airs, which is that the CPU is not talking to the BIOS chip due to liquid damage or corrosion on it. In this video over here, this kills more MacBook Air motherboards than anything else, I went over very clearly what it is that causes this problem, and I'll show you that it's one of the, the BIOS lines over here that winds, up, uh, that winds up breaking. It's one of the lines that sits between the BIOS chip 
and the CPU or the PCH in this instance, and that what you do when that corrodes away is you can simply scratch away the insulation over the trace, you add a little bit of solder to it, I'm just going to put a little flux there, I'm just going to fast forward through, you put some solder there, and then you put a wire there, and it works again. And just to show you where that area is on the schematic, if we go over to 24, you'll see that this is the BIOS chip, and the BIOS chip, let's just take a look at something like SPI MLB 101 MISO. Let's go over here, and we follow this. Uh, this schematic is kind of silly, it doesn't have the underscores present. So we follow this over here, and that's going to get followed over here, and that's going to go to SPI MISO, which eventually goes directly to the CPU right here. So if the connection between the CPU and the BIOS chip is broken, it's not going to work. What some people are going to do if they don't exactly know what's going on is think, let me heat the CPU with a heat gun. The problem with heating the CPU with a heat gun is now that school has one less MacBook Air that they can give back to the student. Because once you heat gun the CPU, you're done. That board is going to be popcorn, delaminated. Uh, the inner, inner layers are going to be messed up if you did it on, a, on the wrong setting for too long. And it's not going to be economically viable or repairable. Whereas running that jumper wire is something that I could teach somebody how to do inside of 20 minutes. Teaching somebody the, the why and how to figure out that that's probably the problem. How to read a DC power supply so that, oh, if it's drawing 0.019 amps, then I know I should look there. That's something that I could do inside of a few days. And that's something that would allow a school district like this one to hand back an entire box of MacBooks to their students that I can barely lift and show on camera because it's so heavy. I can, this is doable, but it's not doable if you're heat gunning the stuff. So if you are in charge of procurement or repair or IT for your school district and you know that they are using these products and you have a closet full of them that have been dropped or smashed in some way, even if you don't want to come here and learn, even if you don't want to bother with the outsourcing, just go through these playlists because I, I really do try to break this stuff down so that somebody with minimal experience can spend nine minutes watching this and have a genuine idea of why the machine is doing the thing that it's doing. I want people to be able to watch this stuff and learn so that you don't wind up spending hundreds of thousands of dollars with businesses that are going to give you back a box of stuff that is, th that's worthless because that doesn't help anybody. Your district's tax dollars deserve better than to go to someone who is going to use a blow dryer to literally light them on fire. If you contact us, we will work with you to ensure that your school district never has happened to your machines what happened to the machine in the above picture. We will work with you on every part of this business. We will work with you on parts procurement, telling you what it is you should be paying for parts. We will tell you what it is you should keep in stock versus not keep in stock so that you can offer quick turnaround times to students without having to invest your budget in parts and devices that you're not gonna need. We will help you equip your district with exactly the tools that you need in order to get these jobs done and out the door while spending the least amount of money possible in the long term. We will make sure that your devices are not sitting in a closet, they're not wasting away in an e-waste bin or being given away as garbage, but rather going back into the hands of students that are using them as tools for learning as they were originally intended. We've been doing this for almost 10 years now, we're very good at it, and if there's anything we can't stand seeing, it's useless waste. And we want to help prevent as much of it as humanly possible, and we will work with you to make that happen. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.